Good morning. So in this video, we are uh, given a polynomial, x to the fourth plus one. We're told what the roots are, and some extra information about uh, what this alpha is. It's e to the pi i over four, which by the way is an eighth root of unity. And they even tell us, hey, a splitting field then can be written as q adjoining the square root of two and i. Um, there's a couple ways we could write that splitting field. We also could write it as q adjoin alpha. And in the first question, they're asking us to describe all four elements. They're actually telling us there's going to be four elements of the Galois group of x to the fourth plus one. Okay, so we want the Galois group q adjoin alpha over q. That's a splitting field. Um, I'm going to also show you how we could have done it using q joint square root of 2 and i. So um, we know that a Galois automorphism of a field extension given in this form, q joint alpha over q, is going to have to send alpha to another root of its minimal polynomial. So we know that alpha is going to have to be sent by any Galois automorphism to one of these four roots, alpha, alpha cubed, alpha to the fifth, and alpha to the seventh. Okay, now if I send alpha to alpha, first one, that means that q, of course, will be fixed, because it's a Galois automorphism, it fixes q, and it's also fixing alpha, so everything's going to be fixed. This is just the identity. All right. So what about if we send alpha to alpha cubed? Well, okay, we'll give it a name. Let's call that, say, sigma. Now, let's find out what the order of sigma is. So what would happen if I applied sigma twice? So I apply sigma squared to alpha. So that'll be sigma of alpha cubed. And now since sigma is an automorphism, this is the same as sigma of alpha cubed. All right, so this is alpha cubed cubed, which is alpha to the ninth. Now, I said at the beginning, but let's, let's verify that. Once we know that alpha is e to the pi i over 4, then if I raise it to the fourth power, I get e to the pi i, which is minus 1. Not quite good enough to get me back to 1. But if I square this, I'll get alpha to the eighth equals 1. So alpha is a, an eighth root of unity, right? We also could have written this as e to the 2 pi i over 8 and seen it that way. So this is an eighth root of unity, which means that alpha to the ninth is just equal to alpha. Right? It's alpha to the eighth times alpha. Okay, so that tells me that sigma squared of alpha is alpha. So sigma squared is the identity. Okay, fine. Uh, let's see, let's try taking another map. We could send alpha to alpha to the fifth. Well, we'll give it another name. How about tau? Fine. Uh, what about tau squared? So tau squared of alpha would have to be tau of alpha to the fifth. And that would be tau of alpha raised to the fifth, because tau is an automorphism which is alpha to the fifth to the fifth, which is alpha to the 25th. And again, since alpha to the eighth is one, this will be alpha. So actually tau squared is equal to the identity. Okay, so that's not giving us anything new. Uh, so let's see, how about this last one? Well, that would be alpha goes to alpha to the seventh. We know that we have a group though. It's closed under multiplication. I have to be able to multiply sigma and tau together. And so that's actually what this has to be, right? It can't be equal to the identity, right? Because we already know sigma is its own inverse. Tau is its own inverse. Um, sigma tau can't equal sigma or tau because of cancellation. So this really actually just has to be the composition. Now we could test that. What if you applied sigma tau to alpha? You'd get, well, sigma of alpha to the fifth, which is sigma of alpha raised to the fifth, which is sigma of, oh, excuse me, let's, we already know what sigma is. Sigma of alpha is alpha cubed to the fifth, which is alpha to the 15th. 
And again, we know that um, alpha to the eighth is one, so this will just be alpha to the seventh. Okay, so it verifies it. Okay, so we have found the four automorphisms in the Galois group. Okay, so our Galois group is equal to the identity sigma tau sigma tau. All right, now I want to do this again, but assuming we'd started not with alpha as a generator for our field extension, but with root 2 and i. You'll see we actually get something that looks pretty similar. So now we're going to start with root 2 and i, and we know that a Galois automorphism has to send the square root of 2 to a root of its minimal polynomial. So the minimal polynomial of the square root of 2 over q is equal to x squared minus 2. And it has roots, root 2 and minus root 2. So those are the options. Square root of 2 can either go to root 2 or minus root 2. OK, that's root 2. How about i? Well, we know the minimal polynomial for i over q is x squared plus 1, which has roots i and minus i. So that tells me that i will have to go to either i or minus i. All right, so there's going to be four total choices, right? Root 2i, root 2 minus i, minus root 2i, minus root 2 minus i. So let's write those down. For, so first is the identity map. This is the one that will send root 2 to root 2, and it will send i to i. Fine. How about instead of sending root 2 to root 2, how about we send root 2 to negative root 2? But we'll still send i to i. Again, we'll, we'll give that a name. How about we'll just call it sigma? All right. And if we check, what is sigma squared going to do? Well, I only need to check it again on root 2 and i. And since i goes to i, root, well, if you apply it again, it's still going to send i to i. So I just need to see what it does to negative root 2. Or rather, we'll see. Sorry. To root 2. So that's the same as sigma of negative root 2. And since sigma is an automorphism, this is sigma of negative 1, sigma of root 2. Since negative 1 is rational, it's fixed. And sigma of root 2 goes to negative root 2. So in total, this is root 2. OK, so that tells you actually that sigma squared is equal to the identity. All right. uh, what if instead of fixing i, we sent i to minus i, but we fixed the square root of 2? OK, we'll give that a name. How about tau? Well, for the exact same reason as above, tau squared is going to equal the identity. And then we have one more automorphism where we don't fix either of these two. And you can see quickly that that is just the composition, sigma and tau. So once again, we get that the Galois group of our splitting field, which this time we write as q join root 2i over q, is equal to the identity, this sigma, this tau, and this sigma tau. Again, group of order 4, you have elements of order 2. In fact, the sigma tau also has order 2. Same thing as we had up above.